Hello and welcome back to another tips and tricks video from Building on a Budget Models. I'm Thomas and firstly this is plumber's aluminium tape. It's very versatile, it's very cheap, this is a bit creased but when it's flat it can be really really nice and shiny. Today I'm going to show you a few little tips and tricks using this material. Firstly chrome trim on older cars such as this Beetle which I made last year. This can be used very much like bare metal foil to create a really nice polished chrome trim. Firstly, a good idea is to mask around the areas that you don't need to be uh, chromed. In this case, this was on my recent E-Type build. Use the cotton bud to push into those areas and I use a strip which is the same length. Cotton bud again here to push into those gaps to try and flatten it out as much as possible and then use a new craft blade to make sure that it's as sharp as possible. Now the reason I mask along the edges is that this has some pretty horrible sticky residue that can be left off afterwards, so the masking tape makes peeling it off really easy, and I'm really pleased with how it looked on this build here. This can also be done on window trims as well. Now the second tip that I've got here is for heat proofing. In models such as Formula One cars, the floor of the uh, car underneath the engine is covered with a kind of metal layer like this. So to do this, I simply cut it to the same shape while still on the backing paper and then stuck it down. Now here, I used it to add reflectivity to lights on the back of a car. So I cut out the lights and simply stuck it to the back of the aluminium tape, because as you can see, it's still shiny on the other side. I then used Sharpie to add rubber trim and colour to these tail lights as I normally would do. The added benefit of using aluminium tape on the back of the tail lights is that it makes them resilient to use of CA glues. If you used a CA glue like a super glue on a clear part normally, it would fog. However, because this is now bonding to the aluminium tape and that's non-porous, it means that this can go on really easily. And I'm pretty pleased with how that looks. My next tip is for use with decals. Now, if you've got something like the number plate on this old British car, which needs to be thin and metallic, then decals fit to this material really nicely. The number plates on scale models in 124 are always too thick, and I think that this gives a really realistic look. This can be used on other metallic parts, which you may put decals on, such as badges as well. But I'm really happy with how that turned out. Next is for use with wiring and adding details to engines. Firstly, I'm a big fan of the Tamiya cables. They are really versatile materials, as you can see here. However, I wanted to add some connection points to the battery in this Lotus 7. So I simply twisted some around the tips and then used some super glue to fix it into the correct place on the battery using a photo as a reference point here. This just adds a little bit of realism and also gives you a way of joining the wires to the battery without having to drill holes. Now for this XJR9, I did choose to drill some holes, but I wanted some places which looked like sockets without having to buy some. So I simply wrapped the end of the wires around in a little bit of the aluminium foil and then stuck those in to the holes that looked like they were plugs. Now the next tip is very simple, it's just for the kind of chrome strips on windows. So I just measured these to exactly the same size and 
just pushed them down and that was it job done Now next, the exhaust pipe on the Lotus 7 was already painted silver, but I wanted to give a different texture on the heat shield in the middle. So I cut the aluminium tape to the same size and length and simply rolled it over the outside. I tried to smooth it out as much as possible and hide the seam on the inside of the exhaust pipe. And then once that's fitted, I was really pleased with the impression that it gave. So next, this is the rear view mirror from my recent BMW Z8 build. Rather than using silver paint, I decided to push a piece of foil into it and then cut that piece out so it was roughly the same size as the mirror. If it did crease over the edge of the mirror, I just covered that up with a bit of black paint or black sharpie. Worked really well. Now the same can be done for wing mirrors, especially ones like these, which are actually concave, which means that it doesn't matter how much you paint them, they just don't look like mirrors. So I simply put some aluminium tape over the edge and using a pair of nail scissors and also the craft knife, I tried to trim around the edge as much as possible. I then used some black sharpie just to tidy up the edge and make it look like they had a kind of rubber surround. And I was much happier with how this looked compared to the standard ones that came with the set. Next, the Lancia Delta HF Integrale has this famous chrome grille at the front. So, what I did was I cut some to the right sort of size and then just pushed it straight on to the chrome grill, which had already painted black and then used the cotton bud to push it around the edges. Also to pick up details like the moulded badge. Then just like before I used a brand new blade from the craft knife and cut as carefully as possible around the edge. Fine tweezers are very useful here to not tear any of the foil that you want to keep. And I tried to fold the excess over the edges so that there weren't any rough edges around the outside of the chrome. And there, I'm pretty happy with that. I think that looks a lot better than silver paint would. Let me know in the comments which of these tips you found the most useful and thanks for watching. Please do like, share, subscribe and hit the bell icon. I'll see you soon.